invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carol Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. <laughs> When Luigi Vasco left Italy to start his new life in America, he promised his mother that he would write and tell her about his adventures. So now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes to Mama Vasco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, if you was to come to America, you would like it very much because of the people that are so nice and wonderful. Also, it's hard to believe how healthy and strong they are. Last week, I'm reading a paper that the three men is a hold up a train. <laughs> but even this is not so wonderful here, because of this same paper is tell her how used to be a fellow Jesse James who's a hold up a train all by himself. <laughs> Besides, it's not the much more to write the so. Ah, well, Luigi, I got a letter for you from Italy in a package. Oh, for my Mamma Mia. I thank you, Mr. Mailman. Well, I, I wonder what's the end of the package. But first, I read this letter. My dear son, Luigi, we're all fine here and I miss you very much. Last week, we have some excitement in our little town. Cousin Mario, he's a fall off at the barn and a killed a cow. <laughs> Yesterday, our prize of chicken, Josephina, is lay 14 eggs. <laughs> this morning, she's so tired, she's asleep late. <laughs> she's asleep so late that she's no wake up her husband, Giuseppe. He's no make cock a doodle do. <laughs> and this morning, the whole town is two hours late for work. <laughs> We receive your presents, my son, and we thank you very much. Uncle Pietro says thanks for the flannel bathrobe. It's too big. <laughs> also, thanks for the straw hat that you send for his goat. That's too small. <laughs> so I'm make exchange, and it's come out very nice. Uncle Pietro is wearing the straw hat, and the goat is wearing the bathrobe. <laughs> Also, Aunt Margarita is a send the thanks for the toaster you sent her, which is now broke. <laughs> but the Luigi is all of your fault, my son. You should have told Aunt Margarita she must slice the bread before she's a push it into the toaster. <laughs> <laughs> my son, thanks very much for the present you send to me, which I am now returning you. Luigi, what am I going to do with a black silk nightgown? I am appreciate you sending me nice American presents. But maybe you exchange this and send me two night shirts. <laughs> oh, but I'm going to never, never return anything to American department store. I wonder if a department store is a take back. Well, I go now to my night school class, so I ask my teacher, Mrs. Spalding. <laughs> Now I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco. Present. Mr. Harwitz. Present. Mr. Olson. Present. Mr. Schultz. Present. Mr. Schultz, I can't hear you. Let's have your present. Nothing doing. You've got to wait till Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, fellow boobers. Oh, I can hardly wait until Arthur Godfrey discovers me. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, please. In the future, when I call the roll, just say present. All right, present. Fine. Well, that's passed. <laughs> uh, Miss, Miss Spaulding. Yes, Mr. Basco? You was speaking about the present, and I'm a got a problem. Well, what is it? Well, I'm a send my mama a present. She's a wanting me to exchange. You think the department of stories are going to do this for me? Well, I think so. Just what did you send her? Well, uh, I take it out of the package. Here. Luigi, a black silk nightgown for your mother? Well, Olsen, I'm going to give her something that she's never had before. 
Then why didn't you give her a Z's and locker at the YMZA? <laughs> Please, Mr. Schultz, please. Mr. Basco, I don't think you'll have any trouble returning the nightgown to the store. Oh, don't say that, Miss Spalding. Oh, no. Luigi, you see me after class, because with returning things, there's always lots of trouble. I remember when my cousin Wolfgang was first married. Yeah, he bought his wife a bathing suit. The minute she tried it on, he wanted to make an exchange. <laughs> and what's to happen? Nothing. Her father wouldn't take her back. <laughs> Schultz, you know, I'm always a try to be like a good American. Is it nice to return things to the department store? Oh, what are you talking about, Luigi? American department stores like to give service. Here, if you don't exchange a present at least three times, they feel insulted. <laughs> but, uh, Schultz, I'm a buy this night gone two months ago. Is it not too long to hold something? Too long? In my own delicatessen, yesterday, a lady walked in and wanted to return a salami she bought three years ago. <laughs> but the why, Schultz? She kept that salami so long, when she tried to eat it, it bit her. <laughs> well, here's my store. I got to leave you now. <laughs> Goodbye, Schultz, and thanks for your help. Now I'm not going to worry about having a trouble with the night again. What trouble, Luigi? Believe me, in America, everybody exchanges. Take my brother Hugo's wife. Uh -huh. Now, Hugo bought her a radio. She didn't like it, so she exchanged it for a washing machine. She didn't like the washing machine, so she exchanged it for a refrigerator. But she didn't like the refrigerator, so she exchanged it for a studio couch. Last week, she brought back the studio couch, and the department store got even with her. Who is she mad? <laughs> what? They exchanged it for something she likes. <laughs> My friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, Pasquale. Hey, Luigi, what's that package you carry under your arm? Well, it's a black silk night gown I'm buying as a present. Ooh, Luigi, that's so pretty. How you know it's a Rosie's birthday? <laughs> <laughs> hello, birthday? Pasquale, every time you see me carry something, it's a suddenly Rosie's birthday. So far this year, she's I have a birthday four times. <laughs> Can I help it if she's like to blow out the candles? <laughs> Pasquale, this tonight gown is a nut to for Rosa. I'ma buy it for my mama. But if she's a send it back from Italy, I should exchange. Luigi, why go to all of this trouble? Give her this tonight gown to my Rosa for engagement and present. I buy you, Mama, two new night gowns. What do you say, my son? <laughs> Pasquale, stop. I'm a no Mario daughter. She's a too fat. <laughs> Always see you talk of fat. She's a very graceful. She's a, like a ballet dancer. <laughs> There's a too much ballet. <laughs> now, if you excuse me, Pasquale, I'm going to the department store. All right. To go, go. Don't give a rose a nightgown. Get into trouble. Trouble? What do you mean? Tell me, little man, where you buy this nightgown? I, I, I'm a forget. I think it was Marshall Field. Marshall Field? Oh, uh -huh. Luigi. Don't you know it's a suicide to start up with the army like that? <laughs> the army? What are you talking about? Marshall Field is a big department store. I always go there. Come here. I'm going to let you in on a top military secret. Huh? <laughs> Just to say Marshal of Field backward, and what do you get? What? Field the Marshal. <laughs> <laughs> That's not all. This garment is a god of what they call a cash of surrender. As soon as you ask for cash, a field the Marshal is asking for your surrender. <laughs> After that, the Marshal is to take you to court. And that's a terrible. That's a call a court the Marshal. Pasquale... <laughs> How do you know so much about the army? Maybe you forget. I'm a run a restaurant. All during the war, I'm a serve a draft of beer. <laughs> <laughs> but a Pasquale, there's only one little night gun. 
Maybe if I'm a talk to Marshall in the field, they make for me exception. Go ahead, go ahead. Start the trouble between the partners. So what's going to happen? Field is going to lock up at the store, and the Luigi, just because of you, is there going to be no more Marshall plan. <laughs> <laughs> Mamma mia. Oh, wait, wait, Pasquale, I'm making a mistake. Huh? I'm going to buy this in a Marshall field. What? Here, look at the label. Fleischer Brother Incorporated. Oh, Fleischer Brothers Incorporated. Pasquale, I'm a saved. I'm a feel like a free man. Now I'm going to take it back to the store. Wait, Luigi. You in the worst of trouble you've ever been in your life. It's even worse than the house. <laughs> Pasquale, what do you mean? Take a good look at this label. Fleischer Brothers Incorporated. What's the initials? FBI. That's right. <laughs> Going up, Alcatraz, you sing, sing, 11 away. Mamma mia. <laughs> Life with Luigi continues in just a moment, but first, there's nothing like taking the children along when you go on a honeymoon. And when the bride is Claudette Colbert and the groom is Fred McMurray, you're guaranteed a delightfully hilarious time. Tomorrow night, CBS Lux Radio Theater will present Miss Colbert and Mr. McMurray in just this situation in the newly released motion picture farce, Family Honeymoon. From the instant the babysitter walks out, leaving Miss Colbert, the widowed mother of three, to face her honeymoon you will have a sure cure for any Monday blues still left. So be with us tomorrow night when most of these same CBS stations present Claudette Colbert and Fred McMurray starring in Family Honeymoon. And now for the second act of Luigi Vasco's Adventures in Chicago, we turn to page two of his letter to his mother in Italy. And the so, Mamma Mia, Pasquale, who's going to know everything about America, he's a convince me it's better if I don't to give her back at the night to come. Maybe you like to buy you other presents, huh? How's about the electric fan? It's a wonderful invention for keeping the air cool. And also very good for slicing the bananas. <laughs> also, they got what is it called the vacuum cleaner. You know how ladies is always a sweep of dust under the rug? Well, with a vacuum cleaner, you save all the dust in a bag, and then you push it under the rug in a one a bigger lump. <laughs> so, Mamma Mia, if you let me know... Luigi, my fellow booper. <laughs> well, did you return the night guard? No, Schultz. If I'm bringing it back to the store, the FBI is going to turn me over to the army for a court martial, and Italy is going to lose the martial plan. Himmel, that's the first time a war was ever started by a night guard. <laughs> What I can do with this night gun? You are stuck with a black night gun? Huh? There's uh -huh. only one thing to do. Sell it to a Supreme Court judge. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, who put such a crazy idea into your head? Well, Pasquale is oh, telling me... Oh, Pasquale. Luigi, I bet you, if Pasquale told you the chief was a railroad train, you believe him. But a Schultz, the chief is a train. So for once he was right. <laughs> Luigi, you gotta go with that. Hello, Luigi. Hey, Schultz, what are you doing here? Never mind, Pasquale. Where did you get the nerve to tell Luigi if he brings back that night gown, he's going to jail? Well, I was just quoting the Fifth Amendment from the Constitution, huh? which says, uh, whereas the people are not going to exchange your things, uh, some of the people, some of the time, is not going to exchange a black night gown with other people all in the time. <laughs> That's the Fifth Amendment. Ah, well, now I caught you in a lie. The Fifth Amendment is about prohibition. How you know, Mr. Smart Alec, that a whiskey is the Fifth Amendment? Everybody knows that. Because of that law, whiskey comes in fifth. <laughs> but, Wally, you was a not teller the truth. Well, Luigi, maybe I was exaggerating a little before, but it's only because I wanted you to marry my Rosa. And I thought it would be a fine engagement of present, this nightgown. For Rosa? This nightgown wouldn't cover her ears on a windy day. <laughs> That's a lie. Rosa's got a small ears. Small ears? When she stands on the corner, people come by and drop letters in here. <laughs> So what are we standing around talking? <laughs> Luigi, you heard him say he was fooling you. Come on, we go to the department store right now before he changes your mind. Well, go by, Pasquale. <laughs> P 
Pasquale. What do you want? I'm a sorry if you was a hurt. All right, go, go. But remember, I'm a bringing your hair from the old country. I'm a love you like a son. You know I got a heart as big as a baloney. <laughs> and for you, it's always a slice. That's right, Pasquale. He was always a full of baloney. <laughs> Goodbye, Pasquale. It's a funny thing. When I'm say it, it come out different. <laughs> So he's a going to the department store, eh? He's not going to have nothing to do with a rose, eh? Well, we see if he's not going to have a little trouble. Ah, bravo, figaro, bravo, bravissima. Ah, bravo, figaro, bravo, bravissima. Fortunatissima, fortunat. Hello? Uh, Fleischer Brothers Incorporated? Uh, give me the manager, please. Ah, uh, bravo, figaro, ah, bravo, figaro, bravo, bravissima. Ah, bravo, figaro, ah, bravo. Ah, bravo. Hello, manager? Fellas are coming to your store soon uh, to bring her back a black silk nightgown. Uh, name is Luigi Bosco. Bosco. Uh, B. Uh, B. What's the matter? Don't you know how to spell Bosco? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Luigi Bosco. That's all right. Now, look, I'm uh, no squealer, but you better keep an eye on this fellow when he's uh, come in uh, because every time he's uh, come into your store, he's uh, take something and they don't pay for it. He's a just a captain. That's a right. He's a kept everything. He's a what do you call a kept-a-maniac. <laughs> hmm. What a lot of people in this department of store. What's that going on over there? Count the girl is a taking down a sign. A stocking's a dollar fifty. Hmm, she's a putting up a sign. A stocking is a eighty ninety cents. <laughs> Mamma mia! Look at all those ladies are rushing to buy that a sign. I wonder where I'm going to find the exchange department. Ha! Huh, here's a sign on the wall. Second of floor. Underwear, footwear, hat to wear, table wear, table wear. Must have been a new sign of people who wear the tables. <laughs> well, it looks like the only way I'm going to find out exchange department is I ask somebody. Hey, pardon me, mister. Can you help me? Yeah, that shouldn't be impossible. I'm the floor walker. You the what? A floor walker. That's all you do? You walk at the floor? <laughs> yes, I've been walking the floor all day. Up and back, up and back for the past eight hours. What's the matter? Your wife is expecting a baby? <laughs> No, I'm not married, and she's not expecting a baby. Then why are you walking the floor? Because it's too crowded on the ceiling. <laughs> now, what can I do for you? Well, I'm a like it very much if you tell me where is exchange department. You see, I'm a got a black silk night gown, and I'm a like. Uh, please, to... I'm not interested in your personal life. <coughs> uh, to get to the exchange department, which is next to our credit bureau, you go down aisle four here, past ladies' lingerie, turn left at the water fountain to aisle six. Go up three counters, make a right turn, a left turn, then another right, and there you'll find the elevator. Uh, take it up to the third floor. Get out of the elevator and turn right, walk down aisle 16 past carpets and drapes, and there you'll find a fire extinguisher. Uh, turn left at the fire extinguisher, walk down that long hall, and at the end you'll find the exchange department. Uh, do you understand that? Huh? <laughs> Please, do you mind if I'm asking you one a question? Uh, what is it? Do you ever exchange something in here? Uh, no, I buy everything at the corner drugstore. <laughs> uh, look, my friend, why don't you ask the information girl on the first floor? Thank you, but how am I going to get to this uh, girl? Escalator. Huh? I said escalator. But I'm going to want to escalate. I'm going to want to ask her now. <laughs> Please, the escalator is right over there. Just get on it. Uh, thank you. Oh, Mamma Mia. It's a wonderful way to get to the first floor. You stand still and the stairs will walk up. <laughs> That's a funny thing. I'm going to do everything information a girl is telling me. 
I'm going to go up aisle of eight to down the aisle of 13 and pass the pots and the pans. I'm going to follow directions for a two hours and a what's to happen. I'm outside of the store. <laughs> well, I'm going to exchange this tonight to go for my mama. I'm going to try again. <laughs> Next. I'm next to Miss Exchange Lady. Oh, you got to no idea how happy I'm a bit to find you. Uh, Has it taken me all, all the day? Uh, please, there's a long line. Is this the package you want to exchange? Yes. Uh, is uh, is it something I'm about for my mom? Uh, but uh, she's a uh, want the two flannel and night shirts. A black silk nightgown. Uh, when did you buy it? Well, I'm uh, I'm uh, trying to remember was uh, the time about Uncle Pietro's birthday. Uh, uh, <laughs> No, it was his goat's birthday. Uncle Pietro's are not the 70 years old. Uh, there are people waiting impatiently behind you. Well, I'm trying to give you the exact... Take back his nightgown. <laughs> I'm sorry, mister. I'll have to know when you bought this nightgown. Well, uh, I'm a comer from Italy, November 12th. <laughs> a week later, I was in a Chicago, November 19th. A year and a two months after the that uh, was uh, January 19th. Three days after that was uh, Tuesday. <laughs> Don't you remember when Take you... Take back his nightgown. <laughs> you're, uh, you're causing a disturbance. Now, there's only one way to tell when this was bought. Do you have your slip on you? Please, I'm going to wear shorts. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Take back his Tell me, sir, was this ever worn? No, I'm a buy it the brand new. <laughs> I mean, did your mother ever wear it? I'm gonna think so. My mom has sent it back from Italy. Italy? Yeah, that's in Europe. I know. But I can't accept a garment that may have been worn. But to my mom is to say she's never wear it. But how can we be sure? Have your name? Huh? Your name, please. Basco. Basco? Yes, uh, Luigi Basco. Oh. Uh, would you mind stepping back here? Our manager would like to speak to you. Uh, Mr. Brown? Uh, Mr. Basco, will you go right through that door? Yes, sir, thank you. <laughs> Sit down, Basco. Sure. What's the matter? Let's not waste any time. What have you got in your pocket? Nothing. I'm only bringing one night to gun. Playing dumb, eh? Well, we know all about you. You're a shoplifter. Please, I'm going to never lift a shop in my life. <laughs> Cut the stalling. You buzz for me, Chief? Halloran, we got a tip on this man. Klepto. No Klepto. He's a Basco. <laughs> Cut the comedy, Basco. What did you rob out of this store? Rob, please. I'm going to never do anything like that in my life. Don't give us that. You're making a bigger mistake. I'm a Luigi Basco. I'm a try to be good American. I'm a always obey the laws. I'm a see sign out the side that says uh, no parking. I'm a never sit down on that street. <laughs> oh, he's given us a dumb routine. Halloran, you better check with the police file. No, please. Uh, Excuse me, gentlemen. Do you mind if I come in? Pasquale, what are you doing here? I know you go to the department of store to exchange. You're going to get into trouble. Say, who are you? I'm a Pasquale, proprietor and owner of Pasquale's a Spaghetti Palace. Everybody in Chicago doesn't know me. It's my credentials. Uh-huh. Pasquale, save me. These are people that say I'm a robber. What? This is an honest man, right, to Luigi? That's right, to Pasquale. I'm a bring him from Italy. I'm a know his mama, right, to Luigi? That's right, to Pasquale. If he was a crook, I wouldn't have him in my family. Your family? So is he going to be my son-in-law, right, to Luigi? <laughs> That's right, Pasquale. <laughs> Halloran, I better check those files with you. 
excuse us, gentlemen. Sure, sure. Go check. Go ahead. We waited for you. Oh, Pasquale, I'm a kind of thank you. That's uh, very simple. I'm uh, happy to accept your proposal of marriage. Guess who's waiting outside? Rosa! 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 You call me Papa? <laughs> yes, Rosa. Rosa, say hello to Luigi. <laughs> hello, Luigi. <laughs> Hello, Rosa. <laughs> Rosa, next week, you and Luigi are going to Niagara Falls. What do you say? But, Papa, it's too cold to go swimming. <laughs> Rosa, you talk too much. <laughs> uh, Mr. Basco, Mr. Basco, we've just checked the files. Uh, I don't know what to say about this mistake. Well, you can have the store if you want it. Please, I'm going to want to use store. I'm a just the one of you should exchange my mama's night gown for a two pair flannel night shirt. Oh, gladly, Mr. Basco, gladly. You, you, you'll get three pair. Oh. And please, please forgive us. I can't understand who could have given me such a terrible tip. Well, I'm glad I got here in the time. Come on, Luigi. I can even remember the way he said it. The nerve of this start to call you a kleptomaniac. Kleptomaniac. That's it. You're the man who gave me the tip. Hey, you? Me? Him. What should I say? Shut up, you face! <laughs> hey, hey, to Luigi, where you going, my son? What about the honeymoon? You go to Niagara Falls and with the your own the barrel. Goodbye, Pop. So, Mamma Mia, is a long story to tell. But it's enough to say that even though I'm almost to go to jail, I'm finally exchange a black silk night gown for a three woolen night shirt. I'm happy to send the one more than you ask, because I know in Italy nights is a cold and a three night shirts is a warmer than a two. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna learn plenty about a certain friend. Hi, Luigi. I got a letter for you from Italy. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mailman. Well, I wonder what... From uh, my mamma mia. Dear son Luigi, I hope this is not too much of trouble for you, but I'm a change in my mind. <laughs> I'm a no want the flannel and night shirts, so please send the back a black a silk and night to gown. Mamma mia! <laughs> Be sure to listen next week at this time over most of these stations when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco describing his adventures in America. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mac Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Hans Conrad as Schultz and Mary Ship as Miss Spalding. Music is under the direction of Lynn Murray. More than fat will be in the fire tomorrow night when my friend Irma, CBS lovable but dumb Monday night blonde, tries to woo her boyfriend Al with some home cooking. After all these years, Irma has now become convinced that Al has not popped the question because he doubts her popovers. Tomorrow night, Irma depends on romance coming by way of the skillet. But will it? You can hear the results on most of these same CBS stations. Now stay tuned for a special half-hour broadcast celebrating the first anniversary of the establishment of the ECA, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.